This is going to be my home for the next four days, a beautiful off-grid cabin on the banks of Loch Fyne in Scotland. Uh, I'm also happy because I got myself an ice cream. It's boiling hot today. It's finally summer. Let's go on holiday. We're going to Scotland. This isn't any old cabin and I'll show you why a bit later on. For the next few days I'm going to be exploring the local area, hopefully meeting up with some people as well and learning a bit about this wonderful part of the world. Up here in Scotland a body of water is called a loch and you got freshwater locks and you got sea locks with salt water. This loch here, mm. It's a sea lock, it's salty. The water here is about 3.5% salinity. It's slightly over-seasoned, if you ask me, but you can also tell it's a sea lock from all the seaweed, and it's rather big. This is actually just a very thin part of the lock here, and it opens out uh, as you get further towards the ocean. It opens out and you, it ends up huge at the other end. The cabin is just over there. It's right on the banks of, of the water and I'm hoping I'll get the chance to do some fishing. I've also got my goggles and uh, snorkels so I might be able to go snorkeling around and see what I can find. This place is quite different to anywhere that I've stayed before and although it's off grid it is actually very luxurious on the inside. We've got a wood burning stove, which I don't think I'll need to use right now because it's already really warm. And then behind me, we've got a whole kitchen. Gas stove, sink, kettle, utensils, fridge. That's a big old fridge. Oh, that smells nice. A grater. Well, this kitchen has everything I need to cook. We've also got an outdoor area with a barbecue and a fire. So we might be able to do some cooking out there. Not gonna lie, that is a, that's a good bed. You might think, well, what makes a good bed? Well, I'm six foot four and I, I like to have a bed which is long enough so that my feet don't dangle off the edge. And this, this is a big one. Perfect. And then in here, we've got the bathroom, a shower with hot water, sink, toilet. You might be wondering how the water gets hot in this off-grid cabin and how the lights work, where the energy comes from. And I'm actually going to be meeting up with the owner of this place a bit later on so we can learn about how this thing was made and how it all works. And there's actually not just this one cabin here, there's another one up there. So this one is cabin number two and up there is cabin number one. In the evening, I was invited to have some food with Charlie, who is the owner of these cabins on Loch Fine. He cooked up some really good food and told me a bit about the cabins. So we started the sort of manufacturing process literally just before COVID started. So they were actually built uh, down south and near London um, in a prefabricated format. We built them, the whole shell um, was basically constructed in a couple of days, which was great. And then the fit out took a bit longer because of the sort of delays that COVID had. But the whole unit was moved uh, up in one piece, basically. So it was transported on the back of a big sort of low loader uh, and then craned into location when, when we got here. We wanted to use solar panels for the electricity. So we've got 15 solar solar panels and that powers the electricity the entire year basically. As well as these solar panels there's some gas tanks which fire up a boiler meaning plenty of hot water for washing up and showering. No fish. Today I'm going to be driving a little way around the lock to the Lock Fine Oyster Bar and Deli to learn a bit about oysters. I've got here the shell of the only oyster I've ever eaten. I remember asking the waiter if I could keep the shell because I thought it looked quite cool. And here I find myself on Loch Fine. Apparently the best oysters in the world come out of this piece of water here. So we're going to learn a bit more about the world of oysters. What even are they? Why do people love them so much? And what's it all about? I first spoke to Paul who runs the deli at Loch Fine Oysters and he showed me a selection of the fresh seafood he was selling. 
I was looking forward to buying some dinner for tonight. I was then taken into the kitchen where I was lucky enough to meet Chef Jerry and I watched him as he prepared some oysters. Some were to be eaten raw and others had toppings that were then cooked. It turns out that there's not really a proper way. Apparently some people like to gulp it down without chewing, other people like to chew. I didn't really know what I was going to do. That's a very interesting taste. Mm. How can you not like that one? That was amazing. It's really beautiful how they're served in the the shells as well. Whoa, spicy. I definitely prefer cooked oysters. Yeah. I've heard that if you try things multiple times, they get better. I love the way it makes your mouth feels afterwards. It, uh, it's like you've just brushed your teeth almost. Yeah, it is. It's, it is like a mouthwash, isn't it? It's just mm. a fresh, such a fresh flavor. Yeah. yeah. We've got an anchovy oyster. Wonderful. Done eating the oysters. I have to say, I'm not as keen on the uh, fresh oysters. They leave a very refreshing taste in your mouth, but um, I definitely prefer the, the, the cooked ones. Those battered oysters, uh, I don't think I've had anything better. But now we're going to a oyster farm. Richard has taken me to the oyster farm. We drove through the beautiful Arkenless estate and finally arrived at a green building. I've never been to an oyster farm before. I'm excited. The oysters will come to the farm at sort of thumbnail size and they will then uh, go out on, into the water to, to grow and that will take between two and three years depending on the, uh, the location, the feeding and the weather and so on. There's a lot of factors involved. And then once they reach marketable size, they then come back here uh, to be graded uh, and then depurated. So depuration is the process that I'm gonna show you in a minute. I feel like I'm dressing up as a ghost for Halloween. Move my head like that. So no hair is getting in the oysters. So in here there are just over 40 tanks. Each one will hold between 600 and 1,000 oysters. Now we're going through a purification process here where we bring uh, water in from Loch Fine that is treated with ultraviolet light to kill the bacteria and they will stay in here for a minimum of 42 hours before they're, uh, they're packed uh, for, for going off to our customers. I learned that by tapping two oysters together you can find out if you have good or bad oysters. A sharp sound like two pebbles hitting together means that you've got live oysters but a hollow sound could mean that there is a problem. Oh, God. See the difference? Yeah, it sounds hollow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what you're listening for. These guys tune into this, so they know every time they tap two oysters, I've got two good oysters, oh, hang on a minute. No, I haven't. I've got one that's not so good here. Andy is a pro at this and taps and packs a box of oysters so quickly. I just went shopping, got myself some salmon and scallops. That was a very interesting experience, learning about oysters. Oysters are odd, but also interesting. So I'm gonna pass some time today by doing some snorkeling and paddling. The water looks really clear, so it should be ideal for looking for fish. It's always really tricky getting on this wetsuit, but it will mean I don't get cold at all. Now the wetsuit that I just put on is really buoyant, so I need something that's going to weigh me down a bit so I can actually dive. So I've got these big, heavy weights. Let's hope they don't sink me completely.
Ow! First dive, I caught something. I caught a crab and then it bit me and my finger's now bleeding. Sorry crab, sorry. That was fun. Oh, whoa. Oh, we've got crispy skin as well. I got a piece of smoked salmon, some scallops, and some greens, and I covered it with some lemon juice and cheese. And I got a garlic and chili mayonnaise. Let's taste it, shall we? No, I don't think I did overcook that salmon. That's that's ideal. Oh, I love the smoky flavor. That's one of the best salmons I've ever eaten. It doesn't taste all fishy. I mean, it does taste like a fish, but not bad fishy. It's good fish. I love scallops. And then let's try my mix of greens. Average. That's all right. That was wonderful. Mosquitoes are getting really bad. It's crazy up here in Scotland. It's about 10 o'clock at night and it's far from getting dark. I've just seen an owl in a tree. There it is. Look at that, barn owl. I haven't seen a barn owl for ages. I was just sitting down on the sofa and out of the corner of my eye I see this thing fly in the tree. It was a barn owl. It's a wonderful place to wake up in the morning. This cabin has these really large windows, which is great because even early in the morning so much light gets in here. And I, I don't know why, but I feel like I always have more energy when there's lots of light in a place. Anyway, today the plan is to head to the local brewery, which is just down the road, and uh, learn a little bit about the beer they make. I arrived at Loch Fine Brewery, and the staff were kind enough to show me around. There was a building filled with a load of large stainless steel containers, each having a different purpose. Some were for mashing, in which a sweet liquid is made from the grains soaking in water. Then comes the fermenting process where the yeast is added and left until the yeast eats the sugars and creates alcohol. The beer is then conditioned before bottling and being ready to drink. A lot more scientific stuff goes on, but I'll save that for another video. You have such a nice uh, backdrop. Yeah, <laughs> I went into the tap room and realised it would be rude not to grab a box and buy some beer. Are you really going to buy buy or are you just going to yeah, fill them? <laughs> <laughs> this is real. Thank you. Radio. Have a good week. Well I now have enough beer to last me a year. There's a red squirrel. There's a squirrel and it's red. Hello. Wow. I'm so happy about seeing that squirrel. I hardly ever see red squirrels. I don't think there's even any in England. Or well, there might be a few, but not many. They're so cute. Blueberry mango. Well, that's one of the mo- mm, Whoa, that did something crazy to my mouth just then. That's a very interesting tasting alcoholic drink. It's really sour. It has a very tangy aftertaste. Cheers. So my plan here is to grill some vegetables and then once they've got nicely charred, I'll cut them up and then mix them into pasta. Make a nice sauce. Last evening at the cabin, we got a bowl of pasta, local beer, Scottish cheese. Hope you enjoyed watching my little 
Scotland adventure. If you want to come and stay at one of these cabins, I'll leave the link in the description of this video where you can find out more and book it up for yourself. And I'll also leave links in the description to the places that I visited so you can learn more about that too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Grilled pepper pasta is good. The midges are quite bad here, so if you come, bring some spray stuff to make them not want to spite you. That's my advice. Take it or leave it. <laughs>